the real danger is in somebody that is not even a scholar and will confidently open his or her mouth to talk on behalf of Allah as we are witnessing in many circumstances today. The fact that you can read something from the internet sources does not make you a scholar. It's very, very pathetic. Most of what is causing trouble today in the world if you look deeper, will never be it is never traceable to any knowledgeable scholar. It will be someone that read one or two, three books, internet sources, Google, and started misleading the entire Ummah, causing trouble. Some people from Oriental Aha. And even some people, their source of knowledge about God, about Allah, about Islam is the non-believers, the orientalists. And that is the truth. Thank you very much, madam. We must tell ourselves the bitter truth. In the beginning, Arabic is not my language, it's not your language. The kuffar, the infidels, the non-believers who wanted to attack Islam took that advantage and started translating our book, our, 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 our treasure, our knowledge, they started translating to us, but in the context they would choose. It may surprise you to know that for more than a hundred years, there was no English translation of the Quran in circulation, except the one did done by non-Muslims. The first time ever that you will have a Muslim to translate Quran into English successively, was Muhammadu, uh, Muhammadu Bektar. And Muhammad Bektar lived in the 20th century. And we have translations dating back to the 17th century, 18th century, and so on and so forth. Who did them? Non-Muslims. In fact, it may further surprise you, it's not only English, you may say because when you boast, most of them are non-Muslims. Maybe that is why. My language, Yoruba language, I used to tell people, do you know that the first ever time that Yoruba Quran was successively translated by Muslims into that language. It was in the 70s of last century, 1970-something. By Muslims, I'm saying. Whereas the first ever Yoruba translation in history of the translation into Yoruba language of the Quran, we are saying, dates back to 1924 by a reverend father. <laughs> that's, that's the truth. May Allah reward you for reminding me of that. A lot of people are actually relying on non-Muslims to take the knowledge of Islam. I will be saying that and be spreading it to cause confusion. Allah, this is the truth. It's not in, only in English. The same thing happened in the French. The same thing happens in the Spanish and many other languages like that. Even in some of our local languages. They were the ones who started translating Al-Quran and Hadith for us. And they had an objection. How would someone translate Quran? I would not believe in it. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> he did not believe in it. <laughs> he never intended to believe in it. <laughs> that means he has an objective of so doing. He wanted to mislead you. We tell you this is what your God is saying. And not only that, it's good, Wallahi Malam, that you, <laughs> you, you, you pointed to that. The first set of professors of Islamic law are non-Muslims. I mean in the Western world. We are not talking of the Muslim world. But the first set of all professors, professors of Islamic studies, professors of Arabic, professors of Islamic law, Wallahi, they were all Christians, non-Muslims. And they never embraced Islam. So what were they doing? They were wasting their time? No. <laughs> Everything. Islamic history, Islamic studies, Islamic law, Arabic as a language. In fact, let me tell you, the first professor of Arabic language in Nigeria is a Christian and still living up till today. From the University of Ibadan. Up till today, still alive. He's a retired professor now. Arabic. Arabic. <laughs> <laughs> so
So we have to exercise caution. Somebody, you are not a scholar. Listen to scholars. Al Quran tells you, first, Alu Ahla Zikri in Kuntum La Ta'alamun. Ask those who have knowledge of Allah, of the deen, of the religion, if you know not. I said the real danger we are facing today is people that are not grounded in any way in the knowledge of Islam, talking in the name of Islam, issuing fatwas in the name of Islam, causing confusion. But they should know the consequence. Because if the Prophet would wait for an answer, if Malik can say, I don't know, for 36 questions, and then who are you to be so courageous and just blowing hot and cold in the name of Islam when you have no knowledge? It's very, very dangerous. But as far as we are concerned too, we should be careful. We should be careful, especially those of us that rely solely on English sources to take our religion. You should be very careful. Especially in the English language. For many years, there were, there were professors. In fact, the first ever known, popularly known professor of Islamic law is uh, Joseph Sacht, who was also a student of Ignaz Gozeher. Gozeher is from Hungary. Joseph Sacht is from Germany. These were respected professors in the Western universities. And they have books up till today in circulation in our libraries. <laughs> One of the famous works of Joseph Sartre is Introduction to Islamic Law. It's been taught in almost every university. And Joseph Sartre was a Jew. So we have to exercise caution in knowing where to tap, where to take the knowledge about Islam. Especially if you are to rely on English sources, or even French or German sources. They are poisonous. Mm. On social media, that is even worse now. <laughs> Without any reference, no authority. Anybody can just go on social media now and put whatever he or she likes. And we'll be talking as an authority in the name of Islam. Those people, they will face the consequence. But we are warning those of you that are relying on them too, that you should exercise caution. It's not everything that is said in the name of Islam will be true. If you hear what the lies of Joseph Sartre, Ignaz Gozeher, and the rest, if you hear, you read what they wrote about Islam, you will say, Alhamdulillah, for the guidance of Almighty Allah. Uh, there is a popular saying that we all use. Let me just say that now. We may not realize it. I read it. Um, it's, it's one of these professors too, very popular. Um, I can't remember the name now. It's, it, it was a professor of Islamic studies in the University of Edinburgh in UK. He wrote many works. Uh, he wrote two popular books that are in circulation all over the world up till today. Muhammad at Makkah. Muhammad at Medina. What's the name of that? Yes, William Montgomery Watts. Professor William Montgomery Watts was a professor of Islamic studies. On the day I read his preface to one of these two books, I discovered some of their tricks. He said, yes, look, it was deliberately each time I write, that is Professor Watts talking, he said, I will never say Allah says, if I want to quote Al-Quran. But rather, I will say what Quran says, which a lot of us are using today. We didn't know the Genesis. Montgomery, Montgomery Watts invented it. And he said, the reason is that I don't believe it was Allah talking in Quran. <laughs> and in order not to offend, that is his language, in order not to offend, those who believe <laughs> it is Allah that is talking, I will not say it's not Allah, but I would rather just simply say Quran says. And that has become a style today, popular, in all Muslim world. 
That is one of the dangers. They have their own agenda in whatever they wrote, in whatever they said. How can someone come and they spent years of research? Years. Some of them for 50 years, for 40, for more than that, researching Islam. <laughs> for what purpose? To serve Islam? <laughs> no, unless we are deceiving ourselves. So please, let us take note of that too. Do not rush into saying what you don't know. That is the beginning. Because even the prophet had to wait for some answers to come from Almighty Allah. We gave an example of Imam Malik, that's a very great scholar, saying, I don't know when he didn't know. Then what, what, what's wrong with someone that is, is not even a scholar? <laughs> Either relying on social media or relying on the Orientalist. We call them Orientalists, the Sexat and the rest. Their name is Orientalist. Relying on them and bringing out whatever they have deliberately written to attack Islam. They were the ones who started publishing in English all those things you hear about negative stories about the companions of the Prophet They started it. And people went to school reading in English and started coming to mocks to read that to people, to say that. The Almighty Allah guide them and guide all of us for all of us are right. But please let us exercise caution. Do not rush if you don't have any knowledge about what you are asking. It doesn't take away anything. It increases, it elevates your status. People will respect you for that. That is what happened to Malik and the other and other scholars. That is what happened to our noble prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So in this verse and in others, that is the meaning. If you hear, you read, yes, Alunaka. Allah is the one providing answers for the prophet. This is what you are going to tell them. Yes, Alunaka and Elahila. So this particular one, what was the question? They are coming to ask you, or you are already been asked about the crescent of a new moon.